Introduction For most people, time management means organizing yourself around the most important tasks or making efforts to squeeze more in a day. Too few pay the attention they should to those little time wasters that can make a huge hole in our time. When we fail to manage these little time wasters efficiently, we actually fail to move forward towards our goals because the energy that easily goes into the former is energy that could have been employed for the accomplishing of the latter. While getting rid of the major time wasters is usually about our ability to manage ourselves in terms of energy and prioritization, getting rid of the smaller time wasters is often seen as being about the ability to handle people and distractions. Big or small, time wasters are related to our habits and our routines. When we operate on time wasters, we operate on our internal structure and our acquired behavior. Getting rid of time wasters takes, well, time. It's a process of undoing what you've taught yourself to do through repetition. It takes repetition to undo repetition. Communication, interaction, has been indicated as the central theme of small time wasters. If we think about it, it makes perfect sense. All conflicts between people, as well as the lack of progress in relationship, regardless of the latter's nature, originate from poor communication. Poor communication is often just poor timing. For example, if we waste five minutes of our energy and time in an irrelevant talk that should have taken 50 seconds, and we do that a few times during the day, unknowingly we might just build frustration and irritation that will unleash later on when we should really spend more time in a relevant talk, but for which we no longer seem to have the necessary energy and patience. We might call them little time wasters, but in fact, the amount of time they can rob us of in time can be shocking. So the first thing we need to be clear about is that the way we interact with people and manage our relationships is closely connected to the amount of time we waste day to day. It's not enough that we try to discipline ourselves and organize our time more efficiently. Unless we are transparent with some of our habits and practices so that others can be aware of the things that matter to us and learn to respect them, our progress in terms of productivity is going to be quite limited. Even though initially you feel a lack of support from the others and their eyebrows plunge into a frown when you try to explain your practices, don't give up. Those who care about you will understand. You could also encourage them to try some of those habits and see if they work for them and help them improve their effectiveness without patronizing them, and even ask for an exchange of ideas on the subject. The point is to make people see there's nothing personal in your attitude and that you just want to become a better achiever and you can inspire them to do the same. When people see the results of your new efforts, they will appreciate you more and you will find more open doors on the path to reaching your goals than ever before. As I've underlined in previous works, since we are all different, it means that there must be more than one method and strategy when trying to get something done. This remains true for managing our time as well. Don't blame yourself that a certain technique that seems to be working for everybody else doesn't seem to work on you. Just find the one that does, and don't get caught up in a quest drama either. If you really want to improve your time management skills, you really need to improve your knowledge about yourself, find about how you function, and what you can use for your purpose. Time management is about the choices you make. The choices you make are about who you are and what you know. Who you are is about what goals and purpose you have in life. Learn what your priorities and goals are, what your qualities and skills are, what your flaws and weaknesses are. Learn to be responsible for the way you spend your time and what it gets you. Chapter 1. The Main Culprits Behind Time Wasting The purpose of this simple list is to make you aware of those areas of your daily life where you might leak time and energy and to offer you useful tips on how to best tackle these common time wasters in the quickest way possible. By following these simple ideas and recommendations, you will notice in a short while not only a significant increase of your time, but also a boost in your productivity and a decrease in the stress levels in your life. Let's check out the main time thieves and how to avoid falling into their trap. 1. First, let's investigate those internal time wasters we generate ourselves through our bad habits and our lack of organization. While others may have a more varied list here, for me, they all revolve around these two major issues, the lack of planning and focus and 
procrastination. The lack of planning and focus. These are ranked the top felons in all studies and books on time management. I don't think it takes a genius to understand why. When you lack organization and focus, you are practically drifting, jumping from one thing to another without a solid coherence in your doing and without a solid connection between your wishes, thoughts, and actions. In other words, your flow is missing. And what is productivity and efficiency if not the feeling of everything flowing? If you fail to define your goals, failure will define you. In my work, Nine Routines of Successful People, I tackle the topic of goals extensively, their role in our life, why and how to set them, and the best ways to work on achieving them. Procrastination. Don't we all know this one? Yep, the ferocious time devourer. Actually, I call it a goal devourer because it can harm your life at the very core of it, your purpose in life, and your right and opportunity to be happy. You've probably heard this before. Being productive is not about working more or harder. It's about working wiser. So what does it mean to work wiser? It may sound painfully simple, but once you switch to action, it kind of stops being that simple. But again, here you need a strategy. You can also check my book, What is Your Strategy? A Guide to Making a Perfect Strategy for Anything, for an insight into the strategic mind. A good strategy gives your mind some space to breathe by simplifying things and making sure there's not too much on your plate at once. The main factor that might prevent you from being able to simplify things and allow yourself that space is opposition. We tend to oppose and resist to so many things in our life, changes, situations, emotions, and even people. This becomes a vicious circle as through that opposition, we are going to remain stuck in that type of situation, with that type of people, with those emotions which will continue to feed our resistance. Study it well, as it is the root of all blockages. Procrastination is a sort of a blockage in itself. We refuse to deal with things on the spot when they occur, and we continue to project a better solution in the future, holding on to the idea that something external will change things to our benefit without us having to make all that effort, or to the idea that we're going to be better prepared to deal with that situation sometime in the future. The hard truth is that there's no productive bright future ahead without a productive present, and there's no productive present without focus and strategy. Whenever you feel that you are backing off from action, just jump into it. It doesn't matter how well you'll do it. What matters is to see yourself addressing the challenges as they come, being in the now. You will create an extraordinarily healthy habit, and you will start feeling good about yourself immediately. Closely observe the explanations or reasons you feed yourself when actually trying to avoid the issue that you are facing at that moment. Don't judge yourself. Just see through them. Leave them to simply be what they are, for excuses, and start the doing knowing that once you put the wheels of action in motion, the mechanism of productivity will run a whole lot smoother. Phone. When you're working and trying to focus on an important task, turn your phones onto silent or turn them off completely. If you can't handle the temptation, additionally, make sure to take time to return your missed calls. A good way to prevent being called at improper hours is to make a schedule for your availability in terms of phone calls and make it known to your contacts. I know some people who keep a personal mobile phone just for close friends and family, thus avoiding being contacted by acquaintances, colleagues, or bosses when they go for a weekend vacation, for instance. Less is more. Conversation is an art. While this means knowing to listen, to guess your interlocutor's mood, how to avoid conflicts, what tone of voice to use and when, the power of certain words and phrases, etc., it also means being efficient, which in this case is synonymous with keeping it short. There will always be people in our circles who just like to drag small talks a bit too much, and our ability to handle those people and those conversations can save us a lot of precious time. If you know beforehand a certain call will take too long or too much of your energy and it is not a matter of urgency, postpone it for when you have both the time and energy to address it. It doesn't mean you're procrastinating, but merely saving your focus for what you're doing now. Mail, email. Only check your emails a couple of times a day and set a specific time for that. Never start your day by checking your email. There should always be sacred time for yourself each day, and early morning is just that. Don't get caught up in must matters, irrelevant mails, or chatting before you get to do something for yourself, like a little workout, 
a healthy breakfast, scheduling your task for the day in case you haven't done it the night before. When you're not using your email client, close it. Email notifications can be quite a distraction and an absolute time waster. Learn how to properly handle your emails. Develop a strategy. Start by setting up folders and filters in your email client to automatically sort out and file email messages. Keep your inbox clean. It gives you the feeling of a clear mind. Schedule daily time for when you want to send and respond to emails. Computers. As soon as you start working on your tasks, turn off any instant messaging app. Every time you're done using a program, a file, or a tab in your browser, close it down. Besides avoiding to get distracted by various things, you will also help your computer work better on what you need to do, which equals less CPU usage. If you find yourself playing those little computer games dubbed Time Wasters, though any game played for an irresponsibly long period of time can be dubbed as such, either limit the amount of time you play them by setting a specific interval or uninstall them completely. If you play online, just don't open that website or block it within your browser settings altogether. Meetings Always ask yourself, is this meeting really important to me? Will it benefit my objectives, goals, and purpose? Apply firm filtering. If it doesn't hold any relevance to you, don't attend it. Before calling a meeting, check if there's another way you can handle the issue by a memo, phone call, email, fax, online meeting, etc. Give everyone an agenda in advance. Make a list of the topics that should be addressed and specify any documents research and information colleagues, employees, or team members should bring. Be punctual. Always try to arrive on time for meetings. Keep yourself informed about the purpose and agenda of the meeting, how long it will run for, and take notes. If only a part of the meeting concerns you, and if it's possible, excuse yourself politely and leave the meeting earlier. Respect time meetings, and if you're not the moderator, suggest a timed agenda. Chapter 2. Visits A. General Principles Impromptu visits can really drain your time and energy. And when that happens, most of us are just content to assume the role of a victim of bad external circumstances. But it doesn't have to be like that. The first thing we can do to fill this hole is to let others know when we are available for visits. I know that doesn't always work and it's not always that simple, but it's a starting point and the more you acknowledge your time is valuable and your availability is not something to be taken for granted, the more others will do it as well. I'm afraid my time doesn't allow me to. I'm really sorry, but I have a deadline to meet and... I'd love to, but unfortunately I'm very short on time. These are all very simple but useful phrases. Basically, they are polite variations of that word you need to learn to use more. No. When you have visitors dropping by at an inconvenient time for you, tell them in the most polite way possible that you cannot see them and kindly offer to schedule the visit for another time that works for everybody. B. Workspace Principles You need these. In my first two years as an employee, I was not aware of how important it is to have certain rules around your workspace. People were dropping by my desk whenever they felt like it, whether it was something important they had to discuss with me or not. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy my little breaks and I have my portion of small talks every once in a while. But the situation was sometimes getting ridiculous. I could barely focus on my stuff with them always standing over my desk, checking me out or asking a silly question, just enough to get me distracted. Again, don't get me wrong. They were nice people, but they just lacked awareness and concern to the other space and time. And the culprit was not even them. It was me. I was the one allowing that to happen. If you want to keep your workspace as highly productive as possible, you must be firm. If people don't get a clear message that it is not okay to interrupt you at any time, they will do just that. What to do when people drop by your desk? Let them know you're busy and ask them to send you an email with the issue, if it deserves one, or give you a call. Make sure you set the time. Stress. Being overwhelmed by tasks and to-dos tend to make us irascible. We do not only lose our focus, we can lose our temper more easily as well. When we fail to meet our own expectations or the expectations others have from us, we become stressed. Time management and stress management are often interdependent and should always be addressed together. Not all stress is negative. Yes, there is such a thing as positive stress. 
This has to do with eagerness, enthusiasm, anticipation, etc. Business, Social Media, and Time Management The rise of social media and the continual decline of mass media merge into a common social and marketing epic, probably the biggest of the decade. Since 2000, there's been a constant drop in popularity in the number of users for both print circulation and TV viewership. According to a number of studies, the latter, for example, has decreased by 50% over the last decade. In comparison to this, social media has set impressive records in terms of rapid expansion. Its usage among U.S. adults, for example, showed an 800% increase in less than 10 years. Looking back at the turn of the century, social media was perceived a bit differently than it is today. Its potential for business growth has people divided into two camps, one advocating the enormous impact social media would have on marketing, the other being rather reticent in this regard and inclined toward seeing its potential as a big time waster. Meanwhile, social media has proved its power beyond any doubt and denial, and it's among the first aspects to consider when launching a small business or startup. Furthermore, it has established itself as a platform that anyone can access and use as long as they have something as simple as an Internet connection. One of the great advantages of social media is its huge capability when it comes to being used as a fairly low-cost platform for organizations to implement marketing campaigns. The incredibly fast shift from mass to social media has led to an incredible development of marketing messages. Their relevance increased dramatically as a new, more efficient, and inexpensive type of message emerged, a data-powered and personalized one. However, now that we've talked a little about the advantages of social media and that we recognize its relevance in our general life as well, we also need to point out its impact upon our time and, more specifically, how much time it can cause us to lose if we lack a proper management in this respect. To be honest, at this moment, there are more ways and it's a lot more easier than ever for people to lose their focus and ultimately drop in productivity due to the myriad of possibilities and opportunities social media presents. 1. Lacking a good strategy Launching a new business without a good strategy is like sailing a big ship without a crew. Yet I see many business owners and marketers engaging in the social media frenzy with no proper research and preparation satisfied with taking it as they go. It's kind of surprising to see their naivety, thinking that just because it's all about Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, channels everybody is using, everybody can efficiently implement them in their business without a solid study and research on them. So what should be the starting point for your strategy before jumping full-on into the social media marketing vortex? The simple answer? To successfully reach and maintain a connection with your target market. Often the efforts go more on keeping up with every new tool that emerges rather than following this simple rule. In applying it, you need to clarify the results you hope to get through your social media implication. Hence the recurrence of that primordial step, defining your goals. This leads us to the next point on our list. But let's just linger on a little more at the strategy issue. 2. Lacking General Focus The purpose of using social media in business is to help you achieve those goals faster. But you must be clear and specific about them so you know what tools are best for this purpose and learn how to best use them. Just ask yourself what social media platforms will help your business grow the fastest. Don't get lost in all the options out there. Decide on only one or two such platforms and keep your focus on them. 3. Lacking a specific focus If general focus was all about goals and the ways to achieve them, this one is about tasks and avoiding any distractions until you complete them. Here, managing social media wisely is again crucial. There might be tones of tweets and comments that seem to demand a response from you. Filter only those relevant and set a time for doing that. Don't interrupt your activities to respond to people on different social platforms. Over the last few years, it has become an increasingly addressed question whether companies should monitor their employees' use of social media. The number of those fired over social media activity has also increased dramatically, and employers have adopted various practices with respect to this issue, from checking a candidate's online behavior before deciding to welcome him or her in the company to blocking the employee's access to social media websites. But that is another debate altogether and does not make the object of our study here. A recent article called The Science Behind Task Interruption and Time Management draws attention to the results revealed by a study conducted by Dr. Gloria Mark, associate professor at the Donald Bren School of Information and Computer Sciences at the University of California.
According to this study, on average, workers get interrupted every three minutes, which means about 20 times per hour. While most of those interruptions are small and only eat seconds or minutes of our time, the bigger and more damaging interruptions break our workflow four times per hour. Very few consider another aspect of this type of interruption. When you're interrupted, you don't immediately go back to the task you were doing before you were interrupted. In fact, workers tend to take on two additional tasks in between the interruption and returning to whatever it was they were doing before. You can probably relate to that feeling of guilt that almost always follows our lack of determination and good time management, which allows these distractions to interfere with our work. It only makes sense, then, that Dr. Mark also found out that, in an effort to make up for distractions, individuals try to work harder and faster at the expense of their personal well-being and, to some extent, the quality of their work. Many come to meet this problem with a simple solution. Avoid interruptions altogether. Well, that's not how it works, especially since it's more than your social media notifications and phone ringing that can cause unplanned pauses. Reportedly, we are responsible for 44% of the interruptions in the first place. With that in mind, consider improving your time management skills by reading books on the subject, identifying your most unproductive daily habits, and replacing them with new, more beneficial ones, and even consulting an expert. Also, never forget the power of TT, task tracking. Whether you are using pen and paper or a dedicated app, task tracking can definitely help you recognize quickly your personal or your business's biggest time wasters. Just start applying task tracking right away and prepare to be stunned by where your time is flying. Another very useful thing you can start applying daily to combat frequent interruptions is prioritization. Tackle the important tasks first. It will be a smart use of energy. Harder tasks require more energy, and if you leave them for last, you will find yourself lacking the willpower and stamina to complete them. And it will give you a sense of accomplishment and relaxation after the first part of the day. 4. Lacking an agenda to-do list. 5. Lacking outsourcing. So, it's now common knowledge that social media is almost an indispensable element of any business strategy. However, when it comes to implementing this element efficiently into a marketing campaign, not everybody invests the knowledge that can make this implementation relevant and successful. While social media is now one of the most advocated ways to promote your business, raise awareness, get exposure, and create a community, it can also be a black hole, sucking a great deal of your time and energy. So it takes awareness to create awareness, which means that once you know the advantages, but also the traps of using social media, you should be able to make smart choices about its role in your life and business. Conclusion Toltec master and author Don Miguel Angel Ruiz once compared life to dancing. He said, If we have a big floor, many people will dance. Some will get angry when the rhythm changes. But life is changing all the time. For me, he is saying here, let go of the resistance, what we were also referring to when discussing about procrastination earlier in the book. Don't fight against the natural flow of things. Adopt and be consistent. You might be saying, yes, but if life is changing all the time, how can you have consistency? Everything is overwhelming. Well, here comes in the so-called secret. Consistency is found through rhythm, your rhythm. The external rhythm might change, but it's the internal rhythm that counts, the one through which you maintain your balance. And that is yours. That is constant. That refers to you being grounded, inspired, and open. That rhythm must be finely tuned to life's rhythm, and it is you doing the tuning. And it is your own personality and focus and discipline that build this internal rhythm. It takes time and commitment, but it is all worth it. Your daily rhythm makes the difference. It gives value and applicability to what we have discussed so far in this book. Without it, all you have read are just a bunch of tips that will never really and practically become part of your daily routine because, as Don Miguel says, the external rhythm changes and you will get discontinued in your efforts. You need a solid internal rhythm as a reference point. Life's not a flat line. It's all ups and downs, even if you keep up with your daily healthy routines. If today was an amazing day for us, we were in great shape, and everything we did was simply spot on, we would want to repeat this experience tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, and so on. 
Yes, we demand from ourselves too often to be just as good every day, but that is not possible. It's the rhythm of things and life, just like seasons in nature. When we don't get the same results each day, we might get discouraged, angry, or frustrated. We might force ourselves into our own world and reality, which will eventually lead to exhaustion, which in turn will lead to more frustration and distraction from our focus and goals. The golden rule here is to know your limits and even to be able to surpass them, you have to know them and adapt to the energy level available to you at the moment. Every time you disrespect the rule and ignore the signals your own body and mind send to you, virtually you run on borrowed energy. You reached out and grabbed some of the energy of tomorrow. And guess what? Tomorrow will be asking for interest. Keep the balance. Don't stubbornly force yourself into today because tomorrow will force itself into you. And that's when and how breakdowns occur. Coming back from a breakdown is both time and energy consuming. You do want continuity and consistency. If you go to any good life coacher, he or she will definitely talk about finding your rhythm and maintaining a good balance between work and play. Finding your rhythm is about offering yourself time for those things that matter to you the most outside of your work. There is such a great pressure in trying to keep up with every part of your life, work, relationships, hobbies, etc., that it can get really hard to avoid burnout and a feeling of disorientation. When those occur, it means you have neglected your internal rhythm. Everything around you has rhythm. When you don't harmonize yourself with it, you are creating resistance. When you live within your natural beat, you accomplish what you want with less stress and more confidence. So what does it mean to live within your rhythm? For me, it means ending the day with a sense of accomplishment, feeling good about yourself, being in keeping with my schedule, being focused on each single task at a time, on one hand, and being focused on my higher goals throughout the day, on the other hand, being in good communication with everybody, from strangers on the street to family and friends. 1. Observe the rhythm all around you. 2. Apply rhythm all around you. 3. Strive for clarity. Balance the logical thinking with the lateral thinking in all your thinking process. Be firm and determined to identify and remove foolish emotional thoughts that produce fear, a lack of confidence, worry, anger, irritation, sadness, or depression. They all have a great destructive potential, but they all stem from thoughts from the mind. So identify their source and nip this potential in the bud. Never try to find the solution of a problem or make an important decision while in a state of worry or anger. First, eliminate the negative thoughts and emotions. Use meditation, prayers, breathing exercises, and walking in nature for this. And then when you sense your mind is clear and free from those blocks, return to the decision-making process. It's not very realistic and effective to give the same amount of efforts to every aspect of your life every day. Remember what we said earlier. Life is changing all the time. Your rhythm is connected to your power and openness to adapt to those changes. Give up the struggle to keep up with all the daily loads and musts. It's a Sisyphus work. Give up the pressure. Welcome both the ups and downs, the changes of external rhythm, and take pleasure in those changes. Focus on understanding what specific time of life you are experiencing right now, and plan your actions based on this specific stage, aiming at getting the best possible version of you right now, not sometime in the future. Do not live in expectations, but in your current life frame. what your qualities and skills are, what your flaws and weaknesses are. Learn to be responsible for the way you spend your time and what it gets you. Chapter 1. The Main Culprits Behind Time Wasting The purpose of this simple list is to make you aware of those areas of your daily life where you might leak time and energy and to offer you useful tips on how to best tackle these common time wasters in the quickest way possible. By following these simple ideas and recommendations, you will notice in a short while not only a significant increase of your time, but also a boost in your productivity and a decrease in the stress levels in your life. Let's check out the main time thieves and how to avoid falling into their trap. 1. 
First, let's investigate those internal time wasters we generate ourselves through our bad habits and our lack of organization. While others may have a more varied list, better achiever, and you can inspire them to do the same. When people see the results of your new efforts, they will appreciate you more, and you will find more open doors on the path to reaching your goals than ever before. As I've underlined in previous works, since we are all different, it means that there must be more than one method and strategy when trying to get something done. This remains true for managing our time as well. Don't blame yourself that a certain technique that seems to be working for everybody else doesn't seem to work on you. Just find the one that does, and don't get caught up in a quest drama either. If you really want to improve your time management skills, you really need to improve your knowledge about yourself, find about how you function, and what you can use for your purpose. Time management is about the choices you make. The choices you make are about who you are and what you know. Who you are is about what goals and purpose you have in life. Learn what your priorities and goals are. Time can be shocking. So the first thing we need to be clear about is that the way we interact with people and manage our relationships is closely connected to the amount of time we waste day to day. It's not enough that we try to discipline ourselves and organize our time more efficiently. Unless we are transparent with some of our habits and practices so that others can be aware of the things that matter to us and learn to respect them, our progress in terms of productivity is going to be quite limited. Even though initially you feel a lack of support from the others and their eyebrows plunge into a frown when you try to explain your practices, don't give up. Those who care about you will understand. You could also encourage them to try some of those habits and see if they work for them and help them improve their effectiveness without patronizing them, and even ask for an exchange of ideas on the subject. The point is to make people see there's nothing personal in your attitude and that you just want to become a waster takes, well, time. It's a process of undoing what you've taught yourself to do through repetition. It takes repetition to undo repetition. Communication, interaction, has been indicated as the central theme of small time wasters. If we think about it, it makes perfect sense. All conflicts between people, as well as the lack of progress in relationship, regardless of the latter's nature, originate from poor communication. Poor communication is often just poor timing. For example, if we waste five minutes of our energy and time in an irrelevant talk that should have taken 50 seconds, and we do that a few times during the day, unknowingly we might just build frustration and irritation that will unleash later on, when we should really spend more time in a relevant talk, but for which we no longer seem to have the necessary energy and patience. We might call them little time wasters, but in fact, the amount of time they can rob us of in... Introduction for most people, time management means organizing yourself around the most important tasks or making efforts to squeeze more in a day. Too few pay the attention they should to those little time wasters that can make a huge hole in our time. When we fail to manage these little time wasters efficiently, we actually fail to move forward towards our goals because the energy that easily goes into the former is energy that could have been employed for the accomplishing of the latter. While getting rid of the major time wasters is usually about our ability to manage ourselves in terms of energy and prioritization, getting rid of the smaller time wasters is often seen as being about the ability to handle people and distractions. Big or small, time wasters are related to our habits and our routines. When we operate on time wasters, we operate on our internal structure and our acquired behavior. Getting rid of time